Welcome to the D Post Sports Chat. I'm Drew Benstein here again with Ed Owens. It's been a while, but uh, signing day uh, has come and gone for West Virginia's football team, and it seemed like uh, bigger picture-wise, things went pretty well for Dana Holgerson and his uh, program. Seems like they signed everybody, just about everybody that they anticipated, and got a couple surprises. When when you just kind of look at the class, what what sticks out in uh, in your mind? Uh, I think they got a lot of quality guys. I mean, they pulled in three, four-star recruits. Uh, they they were really positive. They're high on a lot of the guys that they brought in, and and they really hit that scholarship number. And since Dane has been here, he's talked about wanting to get up to their full allotment of 85 scholarships. He was really positive about it yesterday. Seems really encouraged by the fact that that they have that. And depth was an issue. Depth is something he's referenced a lot in terms of not just on Saturdays, but during the week, getting through the week of practice. And and now that seems like that's a, a question that's been answered for him. Yeah, I thought it was uh, odd that in the Orange Bowl in 2012, they had 63 scholarship players on the roster when you can have as many as 85 and and you hit a little bit on depth i mean is it really that big of a deal to really be at at 85 on a year in year in out basis well he says so i mean he'd know better than i would but yes i mean i think you saw it last year especially on the defensive side of the ball they were devastated by injuries and and they didn't have the guys especially at the end of the season they didn't have the guys that they needed to put out there. They were worn down. The defense suffered as the year went on. I think it was really a noticeable thing. Mm -hmm. So if they do have that depth, and, and they do seem encouraged by it, that maybe that won't happen, and especially in the Big 12 where on both sides of the ball you're doing a lot more rotating guys with, with the way the tempo goes on both sides. You're going to need a lot more guys to, to help fill in the, the numbers there. You referenced the, the four-star recruits, which everybody will kind of – uh, look at and, and uh, dwell upon a little bit more. You had uh, Drayvon Henry, a cornerback, Dante Thomas-Williams, one of the surprises, a running back, and then William Crest, the quarterback, and just kind of given West Virginia's season last year, it seems like he's the, the headliner of, of this class, and you were in Baltimore, got to spend time with William and his family the night before signing day and on signing day. Uh, first impressions, what, 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 what did you kind of, what was your feel, what was your take of uh, William? Humble. Humble. I was actually really impressed. He seems like he has a good head on his shoulders. Uh, a lot of guys coming out of high school, they have four stars and, and kind of anointed as the next starting quarterback at a, at a major university like people are kind of tabbing Crest to be here. You think it might get to their heads. He was, he was pretty laid back, didn't, didn't really buy into the hype of anything. And the one thing he kept saying was, I haven't accomplished anything yet. Yeah, sure, I'm coming. And yes, I'm coming to compete. I'd like to get that starting job. But he is very aware of how much work he still has to do before he's even in that conversation. You mentioned the starting job. Paul Millard's back. Clint Trickett is back. Clint's trying to deal with a, an injury. Paul's playing with the baseball team, practicing. There's still some uncertainty there, but uh, Dana said that he's he's not going to miss any time with football. Mm -hmm. They bring in Skylar Howard, another uh, signee that was introduced formally on Wednesday, but he, he enrolled in January. And then you have William Crest, who's coming in over the summer. Um, given his competition, now Dana said on, on Wednesday that he was going to give Crest every opportunity to come in and, and uh, see what he can do. But is it realistic to really expect William to, to be able to come in and compete and, and ultimately uh, maybe win the starting job? It's really going to be on, on Crest and how quickly he can develop, how quick he can pick up the terminology, pick up the system. Is it realistic? Sure. I mean, I, I think last year uh, you had you had Clint come in and, and he at least picked it up enough to start seven games last season. So, I mean, their, their hand was kind of forced with injuries and everything like that. But uh, I think it comes down to the question of the direction of this program, not just this next season, but going forward. I know Dana's kind of in a win-now mode. There's a lot of pressure on him to win and show results, so maybe he wouldn't want to risk it as much with a younger guy like Skylar Howard or a guy like Crest who don't have the experience. And maybe that might tilt the the odds a little bit more in Millard's favor, Clint Trickett's favor, but I think if you're looking going forward multiple years, it would probably be in their best interest to get one of the young guys in there, trial by fire, throw him in, see how he does, and, and give him, like you said, every chance that he could have to succeed in this offense. So it should be another interesting offseason. And last one for you, looking on the defensive side, they seem to really beef up the secondary. And, and uh, Dana in his Wednesday press conference actually said, he thinks with the guys that they brought in, this could turn out to be one of the better secondaries in the country. He didn't even say Big 12, but what did they do in the secondary here, and, and uh, should that give WVU fans something to be excited about? Yeah, Drayvon Henry, you mentioned him earlier. Yeah. Obviously, four-star recruit cornerback. They're really high on him and really excited to see what they what he can do. Uh, Daywan Funderburk, they're bringing him in as a safety. Uh, they've got Keyshawn Richardson, junior college guy who's coming in, and 
and and they've also got uh, Jalen Myers who's coming in as a safety. And the one thing they like about all those guys is versatility. And and while they do kind of have outlines of where those guys can play, they could slot them in at, a, at uh, safety or at corner. They can move them around when they're playing five DBs like they tend to do in the Big 12. It really gives them a lot of versatility, a lot of options that they can do. And if those guys can play multiple positions, it also takes the question of injuries out. I think they've got depth there, they've got talent there, and they are really excited to see what these guys can do out, out uh, in the Big 12 this season. All right, very good. Appreciate it once again, Ed, and it'll be a couple weeks and we'll get into spring practice. But uh, <laughs> please continue to check vdpost.com for the latest on the Mountaineers. Thanks for tuning in.